Don in London, hello, it's uh, January the 17th, 2013, January seems to be going quite quickly. My video is all about recovery from addictions to either substance or behaviour, my addictive substance, alcohol. Never progressed beyond that, thankfully, in terms of the, the hardness of substances which were available. But I was equally addicted to people, right people, right places, right things to do trying to be perfect and never so, trying to emulate an imagined character that was me. I don't know who I was, but I know more about who I am today and I'm just learning on a daily basis what it's like to be in recovery from addiction, recovery from addictive behaviour which was killing me, alcohol, and striving to be that imagined person who I didn't really know anyway. Nobody knew that person and nobody really knew me because I didn't know myself. So these days learning one day at a time what it's like to learn how to be myself. And what helped me most? Well, I needed help, without a doubt. So having had a bit of professional help, which was excellent by the way in many respects, I just didn't know how to connect with it. But the ex experts, and specialists suggested a fellowship and that fellowship is Alcoholics Anonymous. Now I can't speak for AA, never ever, no one does because we're all unique authentic human beings in fellowship and nobody speaks on behalf of another person and it only has one primary purpose but to understand that in this little book, the little book of AA which is all about unity, service and recovery and the 12 steps of recovery there is an AA preamble which is shared at every meeting so that newcomers and people who have been around a while are reminded of what AA is there to do, what it can do and what it's not there to do. So this is the AA preamble and I'll share some reflections which I've learned along the way. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other so that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. So the only requirement is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect denomination, politics, organisation or institution, does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So no affiliations, the fellowship, but it doesn't mean you can't be affiliated to anything because you are. You're affiliated to what makes life work for you in your family or community, wherever you are in society, be you retired in some way or whatever it is, your purpose in life, the new purpose in life being sober is living one day at a time and seeing what life can be, sober, real life, reality, without having to fix anymore. And I write notes to help me uh, share a mes message of experience, strength and hope. So I have my crib notes here just things I've written this morning and the wisdom if, is, if there is any in there for you well it wasn't me who learned it on my own I didn't learn this on my own it's the it's the awareness I get from being in fellowship from others asking for help and their experience strength and hope all sort of interwoven as well but I am one person's opinion on recovery, me, no one else. So it's the many voices in recovery we need to hear because somewhere in there we will hear our complete story in the meetings when people share. And when they share on a daily basis, they're talking about the here and now, the impact of life right now and how to cope with it, sober. Anyway, me this morning, January 17th, 2013 AA steps in action step one powerlessness and powerlessness over alcohol simply means if I drink life will get unmanageable 
and when I was looking through one of the books it talks about a fatal progression and it made me ask myself what is normal the whole world seems to be enamoured with striving to be number one and to prove prowess in some way or other 2012 last year saw the Olympics in the UK and the nation and the nation was thrown into looking at the su success of athletes who have spent their lives becoming the best at one element of life what about the rest of their lives we cannot do things we cannot do the things we are best at have been taught and trained to do and that element of life is taken away for whatever reason the traumatic impact of change can un unhinge anyone and people do get unhinged by a lot of things working to be the best they can be in one field of endeavour and it causes stress disorders when we cannot do it anymore and I was unhinged because I came against a place where I was burnt out but I was very lucky to be stopped in my tracks becoming more and more able to do just one thing which was to be a specialist cog just a part of the great big multinational to be the best eclectic counsellor you might ever encounter on the planet said one person and that was another specialist working with me because I would swap from one discipline if you like of how to help people to another discipline or specialism whatever suited the person I would find out about and try and help them with and certainly in my imagination back then I did do quite well but I could not see how good I'd become at helping and advising others until I could do it no more and although I might have been, the bit, been a good counsellor the cost of being that good one was killing me and I reckon that I wasn't that good I could not see myself and the impact of life on me so I spent my life helping other people because of the traumas I went through I got good at it helping people understand where they were in the process of sorting things out old attitudes and I reckon I wasn't good, that good because I couldn't see myself I couldn't look in the mirror and see the real me I'd lost myself somewhere so I reckon I wasn't that good old attitudes and behaviour and very bad habits paid for, the, paid for by excellence in the field of work I'd never planned and only undertaken because I was asked to do it and I never knew how to say no to the job or the money and never really thought about the consequences hindsight is very helpful as long as we do not wallow and think we ought to be back where we were before even though it might be convenient for many around us so when we get into trouble with alcohol and trying to fix ourselves and then we can't stop people would like us to stop drinking and probably go back to where the success the perceived success they saw in terms of job or whatever it might be but we can't go back there because it wasn't real it wasn't a real human being facing reality it was a real human being suffering and not coping with reality because of trying to fix and we might not have done what we did so I don't look back in anger I look back thankfully and say I'm still alive and somehow I got to this stage where reality is preferable to the, the fantasy I thought of the fantasy I was trying to emulate and it doesn't mean I didn't do a lot of good work and it didn't, doesn't mean I didn't have success but at what price you know what cost I don't know if I was successful then when I look at it that way because I didn't know who I was I was trying to, trying to be whatever I thought I ought to be when we are looking to find a way out of our malady how incomprehensible addiction to alcohol substances, particular people, particular places and doing particular things it all starts with one habit the habit of fixing ourselves so that we can cope in the moment of now unfortunately the moment of now when we have fixed ourselves in some way with a substance or behaviour cannot be maintained and then we try then we try harder and the more we try with the excesses the less effect and the less the impact and the more we try to keep on fixing it seems logical and then becomes a madness we cannot stop and I was, you know, when I was watching people on holiday on one of these TV reality shows showing people not only drinking multiple shots the fast as they could but uh, ingesting gas like oxygen and laughing gas as well in order to get a better high 
the faster the high, the faster we fall. So the extreme emotional experience of what happened is not real. And indeed, a lot of us prefer it not to be real because reality is a bit difficult and we're a bit awkward in it. Yeah, and it becomes a madness we cannot stop. And an emotional and spiritual malady it took me a long time and a long while to understand that I was trying to fix what I was trying to fix with my emotions, the feelings, and to be okay right now as quickly as possible. So after work, down to the pub, have a laugh with work colleagues, go home, have more drinks, have a laugh with a girlfriend, or whichever girlfriend had stayed long enough to put up with me and my antics, or girlfriends who did exactly the same as me in order to fix the moment and deal with the exhaustion, tiredness, happiness, joy and everything. Yeah, what I used to take away, what I used to take, take away the pain, the exhaustion of life and the bad times, which had started so I could experience the joy and the happiness that life offered. Yeah, drink in all circumstances, for sad times and good times. No wonder I was confused in my early days. Everyone used alcohol or something to celebrate something or other. And when there was a tragedy, we drank it to, to avoid the horror and the feelings of grief. So avoiding the feelings of grief just made them prolonged and made us drink more. Alcohol was my best friend under all conditions except one, living reality and coping in the moment of now. I was so used to fixing myself and alcohol was always there. It never seemed to be the cause. It always seemed to be the solution to anything on any, any given day. And this is the fatal progression. From having a substance as a best friend which never argued with me and never seemed to cause me grief suddenly revealed itself as the problem and not the solution. So the more we try and fix ourselves with substance, people, or places or things, the more we try and fix ourselves in that way, the more we are out of reality. Yeah, maybe it seems some of us, maybe it takes some of us a long time to realize the impact of alcohol. It seems like a solution to everything. I rarely had a hangover because I probably rarely stopped drinking. I didn't drink during the day for donkey's years, but I was always ready for a good old drink when work had finished or I was on holiday. Drink seemed to make anything possible, and in many ways, my own li in my own life, drink made life work for a long time, but it was not the life I would have chosen had I been more able to understand my feelings and cope with real life. Always in a high-pressure environment at work, drink was a good self-medication to work, rest and play, a bit like the old Mars bar advert. It aids work, rest and play. Well, not reality though. And in reality, would I have been doing the things I was doing had I been sober? I don't know the answer to that, but I do know that sober works far better these days. Sometime last year, a friend mentioned in the last six months of my drinking, in the first six months of recovery, they could be, um, probably were the most useful months, learning the difference and making the possibility of a new life start to happen. From having no emotional understanding in those last six months of drink, to the most painful six months where emotions surfaced and I had no idea what they were, except they were completely unmanageable. And we don't manage feelings, we have them. And then we think about them, if we're lucky, if we give ourselves time. So feelings completely unmanageable and I was being driv mad, driven mad by experienced feelings for the first time in the raw since about the age of five. Raw feelings from loving to hating and then finding there was something in between just about every nuance of feeling which seemed to be fleeting as the turmoil erupted in those first six months of recovery. From an alcoholic rock bottom into an emotional roller coaster, with every moment with, pa with the passing of each day and an understanding what reality had to offer. Very painful reality in the cold light of day. Everything that alcohol had taken away, feelings in the moment of now, and no way to cope with them except to live them sober moment by moment and how did I do that? Well left to my own devices and seeing a doctor once a fortnight or a counsellor 
at one stage once a week for a bit it wasn't enough because there was great gaps left to my own devices my thinking went back to I can't stand my current situation because I'm impatient where has my life got to and at that stage I was homeless and it was horrible but being homeless and horrible gave me an advantage in a way because I had nothing left around me only memories which were not helpful so where did I go? I went to fellowship where everybody's in the same boat and we're different so you'll hear different recovery stories until you, you hear your own story or bits from different people so we get to identify with the truth what it's like to live life in reality it is no wonder that many people struggle with sobriety from having the control of alcohol to fix everything and when it doesn't work anymore many people slide into new ways of fixing and that's how it works and when we stop fixing because it doesn't work the shock to the system is so great we may return to the fix to take away the reality of where we are and when people come into fellowship and hear the stories of other people which are quite ugly sometimes because we tell the truth or we keep on trying to get to the truth of who we are don't forget we don't just start telling the truth in recovery I didn't and it, you know sometimes I despair when I say things because I don't know if they're truthful or not and then I catch myself out in a lie just trying to be kind to somebody and still I need to be kind but I don't need to tell lies little white lies which can become big white lies I was talking to um, I was sharing about being headhunted from blockbusters which is very relevant today because blockbusters just went into administration in the UK one of the jobs I had in my final days of drinking uh, I helped people as a sales assistant and then I got headhunted to be doorman and weekend whatever sort of pro tem manager at a very posh arts club and you know I picked that example to see it's true I did that I was headhunted and I had to leave because it was a drugs den basically and I couldn't couldn't deal with the consequences and the responsibility of stopping these people if people are taking drugs you can't stop them they won't stop and they won't listen certainly not to the doorman or the pro tem manager at the weekend as uh, that was the under title but doorman would, suff would suffice what times we go through so from an eclectic council of being a small cog in a big multinational to various other work which is not worth um, yes yeah, not worth sharing here or uh, what might I call be called very high state status work I don't mention it too much because what's the point I'm just a human being now and I'm really pleased to be just a human being yeah so from having the control of alcohol to fix everything and when it doesn't work anymore many people slide into new ways of fixing and that's how it works and when we stop fixing because it doesn't work the shock to the system is so great we may return to the fix to take away the reality of where we were and uh, in the blockbuster days in the arts club and the painting of houses and living under a particular enterprise in the Fulham Road because there was nowhere else to go and hiding away from society I finally finally had to throw in the towel and say I can't do it on my own anyway the good news recovery is not about fixing anything it is about experiencing everything so no more fixing and I experience life that's why life is good bad and ugly and it is beautiful beautiful because of it because we can see the difference and the beauty and I'm really glad I did all those jobs you know from a road sweeper with a broken leg only doing one shift and being fired because I had a broken leg through to the boardroom in uh, very big companies and other stuff I enjoyed most of all photography and being a van salesman in the Midlands selling lemonade
on the back of a lorry, door to door. Where did life go? Well, I kept on saying yes when I should have been saying, well, uh, when I could have, if I'd got my wits about me, say no. I never had my wits about me. I was too frightened to look bad. Ah, there you go. Yeah, that's why life is good, bad and ugly. And it is beautiful because of it. Once I realised reality was going to give me the best roller, co roller coaster ride ever possible, I started to wake up to reali reality one day at a time. This raw, awkward new beginning would not have been achieved without the help of other people who have gone through the same experience of hopeless alcoholic to a human being in recovery. Nobody knows just how life is going to turn out. Yeah, nobody knows how life is going to turn out in recovery. There are no guarantees except one, the real life experience in the moment, where our feelings fit with what is going on, is always going to offer us the best choice about what we can do and cannot do each day. We learn to say no to what is bad for us more often, I should just say more often, and saying yes to what is good for us in the moment of now. Our brains work again, at first not so well, and when things don't work too well we can ask for help, because fellowship helps others find the right people to help in the moment of now, both inside and outside fellowship. So don't forget, not all the answers are in fellowship, but there's a lot of wisdom in learning how to find the answers about life. And if the 12 steps didn't work in reality, if I couldn't live life in, in real life as it is, it wouldn't work, would it? And there'd be no point to it. So it's about living life. And the good news about reality is, question mark, we will not always get our own way, and we don't care if we don't get our own way. Thinking the world was about us and what we wanted becomes about thinking the world is about everyone and what is needed by everyone. The opportunity to be selfless rather than self-obsessed is there. Not everyone stops being self-obsessed. Well, not straight away. But many people do remain self-obsessed for a long time and can only see, see things from their own outlook rather than seeing the big picture. <coughs> which is how do we fit with what is going on and what role may we play in it. There are quite a few bitter individuals who remain stuck, selfish and controlling, white knuckling and thinking their way of recovery is the only way. So if you meet these people, probably best to avoid, to avoid too much contact with them, but listen to their experience of life and see if, it, if you want to be bitter, twisted and white knuckling, it's always there and available but it's probably better to be open, honest and willing to change. Recovery from addiction becomes a personal journey of discovery and the outcomes will always depend on the attitude and behaviour of, of you in recovery, not what somebody else is doing. So if you compare yourself to other people, either you'll be higher or lower, or just about equal. If I approach life in an equal way, with respect for each and every individual I meet, rather than their status or their fame sometimes. People can be bowled over by, why do we have the X factor? Why do we make people addicted to a particular way, a single element of life, and then see themselves as a failure if they don't win? Some people take it that way, some people are learning that the X Factor is not for them, or there are bigger and better choices to be made rather than just being a singer or an acrobat or something. Notwithstanding, watching the perfection in some of these shows is absolutely marvellous. But it's the impact on the person I, worry, I, I would be concerned about. How do they get balance in life when they put all that effort into one thing and their perceived success is only in winning? or financial success. That's the one which killed me. I did have it for a bit, and then I drank it away. 
Many people do remain self-obsessed, etc. Recovery from addiction becomes a personal journey of discovery and the outcomes will always depend on the attitude and behavior of you in your recovery. If you cannot stop being selfish and vain, the meaning of life and all it has to offer will be very narrow. It will be all about you and your vanity and what you want. If you become open, honest and willing and selfless helping others, life takes on new meaning and you will always find yourself with more love and purpose than any single human being can handle. Then you have choices in all respects, one day at a time. But you don't just... Yeah. You learn humility, if you're lucky. Which is, you're no bigger, smaller than anybody else. And respectfully, and with integrity, we can conduct ourselves in a way which opens the door to all the possibilities that are in our vicinity of living. The fatal malady which kills so many is a tragedy. So how many actually make it to recovery? Well, the suspicion is that not many. And the malady keeps people drinking, drugging, fixing in order to get away from the pain of reality. Addiction to anything where we try to fix ourselves with something turns a human being inwards and completely awkward with reality. It is a bit like a phoenix rising out of the ashes, an old life which has burned us out to the new life which is about developing courage to change, faith in doing the next right thing and confidence to ask for help. It does not mean help will come immediately as we ask because that's the old way of fixing. And don't forget, people, people around us already have a complete life, which is why fellowship is so intrinsic. It works because there's lots of people all together talking about experience, strength and hope. And if we try to take on, if I try, try to take on me as a single person trying to help me in my early, early recovery, I suspect not only would I have been drinking, but the person would have been so drained they would have thought about drinking again. One alcoholic will pull another one down rather than bolster them up more often. So we need the many, always, and sometimes we have sponsors who help us with the 12 steps and then step back into friendship and be the equal. Everybody's on the same level, there are no gurus, and if you make a person a guru, they will let you down because they can't be there always when you want them yes so we were burned out so Phoenix rising out of the ashes an old life which burned us out to new life which is about developing courage to change faith in doing the next right thing and confidence to ask for help it does not mean help will come immediately as we ask. We learn patience and resilience and deal with our feelings in the moment, which can be very frustrating feelings of anger and resentment. Why can't I get things sorted now? Why, in my case, did I spend nine years homeless? I mean, you know, the where I was, I was not, I was beyond the help of the authorities and sleeping rough. And I didn't want you interfering with me either. <coughs> am I ever I don't know how do we get to where we get to well with a bit of luck and a bit of help and asking for it asking for help that is not asking for hurt but life will hurt us yeah there is a suggestion in recovery made by some and this one really gets me to sit with our feelings I'm not so sure about that better to get to a meeting express your feelings as often as you can so someone somewhere may be able to offer some help from a kind word which would be quite nice or maybe to a solution which would be even nicer over time we learn over and over again what it is like to be human being human today and I like and I love being human the same as all humans being human in the moment of now which means I don't know the answers for you and I only get to the answers for me as I go along you know, I haven't got the prescription of life. Who wants one anyway? When I get there, I'll be all right. Well, what about in between? We've still got to live. And I like the journey rather than the destination. 
Anyway, during my life, which was so blighted by alcohol, I used to pretend to be okay. I used to pretend I could do things without ever knowing how to do them, do the things I was asked to do. In other words, the old life. I would fake it to make it. In other words, I would learn it on the job. I'd have a notion of how it should be or could be and busk it, as they say, fake it to make it. And I've heard it said over and over by many people that in recovery sometimes fake it to make it. And I find this is very disagreeable to me now. It is suggesting dishonesty and pretense. In recovery we do not have to fake anything to make progress. Don't fake anything to make progress. We make progress by telling the truth, learning how to do things and trying out new ways of living. So we might imagine that we could do something and then we ask for help so we can do something. It's a much less painless process of being truthful about what we can and cannot do. And don't forget we can have the potential to do things. So we don't have to say yes we can do them even though we imagine we can do them. It's like imagining you're the best lover in the world, but uh, you know if you actually if you went back and asked people, probably weren't the best lover in the world, but very trying. In recovery, we do not have to fake anything to make progress. I suppose women know more about not wanting to fake anything. It wants a quiet life in that respect. I mean, it, it's just bloody terrible. So don't fake anything. We make progress by telling the truth and learning how to do things by asking. Learning together, inclusiveness, rather than thinking we ought to know how to do this. And if you're dealing with another human being, start at number one, start from scratch, not knowing anything other than there's some sort of connection, attraction, inclusion, desire, you know, natural things going on. All about love. Trying out new ways of living is better than we better is trying out new ways of living is better when we let everybody know we are trying something new and asking for help is about humility and not ego. Hiding our lack of ability or awareness. I do believe in recovery that if you try to fake yourself in order to make yourself, the road of recovery is more difficult and profoundly negative on our emotional and spiritual well being. Humility exclamation mark the very essence of learning and asking for help. And if you encounter people who won't help you or cannot help you, let them go. You may have some choice words in your head about not getting help or why don't they help me and feeling a bit resentful. But if you continue ask, asking people for help who won't or can't, time to move on, let go, don't be bitter about them. I didn't get sober to fake anything, least of all how to love how to be loved back and cherish people as they are with all their faults because if I can see their faults I most likely have them too that's what I wrote this morning and um, <coughs> I, I do find it disagreeable when people suggest fake it to make it you know I'm learning how to be me and if I pretend to be something I'm not, or pretend I can do something when I can't, what is the point? What is the point of the serenity prayer, for example? Can do, can't do, and learning the wisdom in the moment of now. So it is the serenity prayer which keeps me open, honest and willing, I guess, most of the time. And stops me telling little white lies a lot of the time. So I get to the truth of who I am, who I want to be, how I can love people genuinely and authentically as best I can with what I know so far. And the, the journey of life is about love. Loving oneself enough to face reality, getting the courage, faith and confidence to keep on going when it's tough. But not lying to oneself or to other people. It doesn't work. It, it, it disables progress and disables other people from knowing the real you, the one with humility, asking for help and learning life one day at a time. That's what I argue for. And it's difficult because we face a world which prefers to put on a brave face, pretend to be okay, and the ego is all about me rather than us, and fellowship is about us. 
so I am very lucky that I got to fellowship profoundly unlucky it took me five years to go to the second meeting and profoundly unlucky that the pain and the un unimaginable horror that you see when you're really down in the dumps around you and inside you coming away from that is good but it's excruciating in the first few months and I do not underestimate how difficult it is for anyone to remain sober one day at a time so the serenity prayer which helps me in the moment of now with the can do can't do and no matter what your faith or belief is either to God or good or just the good of life the good of life as it can be right now will return you to sanity and serenity and peacefulness even when there's a storm of emotion going on God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference I'm learning it in the moment minute, hour and just for one day